Hey guys, John from FlyMyHealth.com, and today I tried to go fly and my airplane would not work. Um, when we did a mag check, uh, turns out that this mag made no spark. So we got about a 100 RPM drop on the left mag, and we got a, a total drop of everything. Uh, it all dropped on the right mag. Um, it went from 2000 RPM to zero. Um, the engine shut off, so that's not good. Um, don't really want to fly around on just one mag, because then if it went, that would be a bad day. So we decided to go ahead and replace it, take this one off, and we're going to see what's wrong with this and see if we can go ahead and try to overhaul it and keep it as a spare um, for when the next one breaks. I figured this also might be a good opportunity to show you guys exactly what this little piece of equipment does, how it works, and what you need to know about it as a private or commercial pilot. So for starters, this is a magneto, in case you didn't know that. Um, if you're unfamiliar with this, then you should probably check out our Under the Cowling, Everything Under the Cowling Explained video. I'll include the link in the description below. That'll show you exactly where these are located on the engine, what they look like when they're actually put onto the engine. So imagine my hand's the engine. Well, this would go into it. There'd be a gear here. That gear gets turned by gears on the crankshaft. And so as the crankshaft turns, as the prop turns, and the engine's turning, it turns this uh, little... Um, shaft there and that spins everything inside. Out the back end we would have our distributor cap with wires coming out of it. We would have four spark plug wires coming out of here. A little nice neat cap that goes on there, screws on, keeps all those wires in place. And then on the side here we have a skinny little wire coming off. You've probably heard about P-leads. P-leads are the skinny little wires that ground out the mag to make it stop producing spark when you turn the key off. Um, because once you start spinning this guy, once the prop starts turning, once the engine starts running, and that shaft is spinning, this starts making spark. It's going to continue making spark forever until the engine stops turning. Now, if the engine's running, it's making spark, and we're giving it fuel, it's going to keep running. So we can turn it off by either pulling the mixture and starving it of gas, or we can turn the key off, ground out the mag, so instead of the spark following through the wire to the spark plug and jumping over the gap to make spark to make the engine run, the spark well, instead, just follow the path of least resistance out the P-lead right to ground, to the airframe ground. So that's, um, of course, you know, electricity is going to follow the path of least resistance. So two ways to shut off the engine. Um, we do it with fuel, and occasionally we like to do a P-lead check. We quick turn the ignition switch off, see if the engine keeps running, to make sure those P-leads are, in fact, not broken and they are grounding up the magneto properly. Um, that's time to talk about that for another video. Anyways, let's go ahead and pop this guy open here. Obviously, I've kind of cheated here already and taken some screws out. But four little screws hold the back of this thing on. We'll take that off and take a look inside here. We would have two more screws holding our distributor on here. We'll pop this guy off and we'll look at it first. So what we see in here is we have a coil of wire. Uh, this is where the spark comes from. It touches that little part there on this rotor, and you can see as that shaft turns from the engine, while it's also turning that gear on the inside here, that gear spins this gear. This gear has a little piece of metal on there that connects to those four ports there for your four spark plug wires, and that distributes the spark to the proper spark plug at the right time. Um, we can see this one's kind of burnt up. You know, we can actually see pretty good amounts of wear on, uh, on some of these posts here where the electricity has jumped across. Remember, sparks are incredibly hot. Um, they generate like thousands of degrees of heat, although it's very small, so it doesn't make anything catch fire, but it is very hot, and we can see that's pretty wore out there. That might be part of our problem, but this thing totally failed. It wouldn't make any spark. So that could be it, because that would be common to all four sides. Um, it's probably not one of these posts, because if it was just one of the posts, we'd have some spark coming from it. So we'll go ahead and put these guys aside here. Now, looking at what actually makes up this magneto, if you can look inside there, you'll see a big magnet basically connected to that rotor shaft. And as that big magnet spinning around, it's spinning around and creating a magnetic field within two coils of wire. So there's one coil on one side, another coil on the other side. One side has more windings on the other. The reason for the difference in windings is we create a lower-ish voltage by spinning the magnet around one coil of wire creates a magnetic field and an electric field. And then when that electric field collapses, the magnetic field collapses rather, it 
fluxes, so to speak, as people like to call it, the other field to generate a much larger um, shock of voltage to uh, actually create spark. Now, how do we actually control that magnetic field if we have, you know, say the north end of the magnet pointing towards here? Well, as we flip it around, that would invert the field, that would be the south end then um, of the magnet, but we also want to abruptly collapse the magnetic field to really um, generate a large difference in voltage between the two sides. And when you have that magnetic field collapse, it emits a pulse of electricity, and that creates a spark. How we control that magnetic field from um, collapsing is via our points. And our points, we'll go ahead and tilt this guy here so we can get a good look at it. Right there, the tip of my finger, those are the points that open and close. We can see they're open and then closed, open and closed. And if it's kind of hard to see, I'll just do it with my finger there. So that part that I'm opening and closing there, that gap. When that gap opens, that makes the magnetic field collapse in one coil of wire, which um, basically generates a pulse of electricity of a much higher voltage in the other coil of wire and sends the spark through this little guy here. So we have our cam, which is this little black wafer uh, going through this shaft here. And as that cam turns, it works that uh, little piece of metal here back and forth to open and close the points. So as that cam wears, that will actually affect our timing. And it's pretty worn, but it's not worn so much that it should have caused this thing to fail. The points are still opening and closing. Lastly, in this uh, assembly here, we have this wire coming off here to our condenser. Capacitor, condenser, kind of interchangeable terms. This could have been a problem for us. That might have failed. Um, if that failed, then the magneto would fail. It would also um, generally give you some feedback through the radios, uh, because basically, when you open that one circuit there, and you open those points, well, the electricity that you've built up in that coil of wire wants to go somewhere. Normally, it would just jump across this very minute gap when it first initially opens. So we give it somewhere to go by feeding that electricity to the condenser. And imagine the condenser being like a uh, being like a tube, and imagine electricity being like water. Well, we feed the electricity there; it starts to fill with water, and as it gets full. And then the electricity wants to, okay, now it's full in the condenser, it can't go anywhere else, and it wants to jump across the gap. Well, the gap's already further open then by the, uh, by the cam being at full deflection and actually opening it all the way. And then when it closes again, we energize the other side and just keeps repeating the process, generating lots and lots of sparks uh, each minute. So, those are our basic parts. We have two coils of wire. And we tested them. They work. They're not broken. If one of those coils had broken or one of those wire, um, one of those windings had a wire that had fractured, then yeah, it would stop making spark altogether. The magneto would totally fail. If uh, the points didn't open and close, we would get no collapsing of the magnetic field to generate that big spark. So that's not working. The condenser may have failed on this. And what's silly is this condenser, we could just replace that part. Slick M3984. Um, yeah, we can buy a condenser for like a car for about like three or four bucks. Um, this one's 140 because uh, it's an airplane part, but it's still a lot cheaper than buying a whole new magneto. And so, if I, what I'm going to probably do with this thing, I could test it out. I can take my handy DeWalt drill, put it on here, spin it around, and yeah, it's shocking the crap out of me. That is working for sure. Um, I can feel myself getting shocked through that little tang right there. So this magneto is good as far as I'm concerned. It probably just has a few worn out parts that need to be replaced. We'll replace the points while we have it apart. Replace that cam in there. Winding seems good. Um, it's not shocking me like crazy, so maybe it's getting a little tired. Um, the spark's not quite as strong as it used to be, but you know, winding really shouldn't go bad um, despite all the heat and vibration over time. This magneto does have about 800 hours on it, so it's definitely time for new points. Um, we'll throw a new condenser in there just to be safe and replace some of these other little parts here. Um, either way, it's still going to be cheaper than buying an overhauled unit at $750 and buying a new unit at $1,250. Um, so a little bit in parts isn't too crazy. I'll take this over to my A&P and give them a six-pack of beer, ask them to put it back together for me, and I'll order the parts for it. And for about, you know, probably $200, bucks, i will have relatively a brand new mag to throw on the airplane. Um, 
for when uh, the one I just bought goes as well. So now I got a spare part lying around, or I could sell it on eBay maybe. Um, but that's basically what we've got there. So a relatively simple piece of equipment, but still can have some problems, obviously. Um, the problem that we really uh, seem to experience here is a condenser and the points wearing out. Um, so about every 500 hours, good to open one of these things up and at least replace the points on them. Every thousand hours, think about replacing it with an overhauled unit or um, maybe overhauling it yourself under the supervision of an A&P. Uh, we can definitely see there's some parts starting to wear there. Um, so these things do spin awful fast, get awful hot, and run for a very long time um, making power for us. So hopefully that explains what a magneto does, how it works, what are the parts. It's relatively simple, kind of heavy. And of course, if you have any questions at all, leave them in the comments below. Pop quiz for you. If you leave your keys, say, at home for the airplane, but the door's unlocked, and you want to go hop in your airplane and fly it somewhere, what could you do without disassembling your magneto? What could you do just popping the cowling on your airplane to make the airplane run on both mags, and you're not allowed to use a screwdriver, and you cannot force turn the ignition or anything? So you can't actually use like a screwdriver on the ignition switch or anything like that. But what could you do um, to make this thing make spark um, with the ignition in the off position? Not that you would actually do it, but maybe if you were stuck somewhere like out in the Everglades and you lost your keys and you had to get back home, what would you do? How would you make your engine run? So leave your answers in the comments below. Make sure you give us a thumbs up, like our video, subscribe to our channel, keep up with our latest episodes. Really appreciate y'all's support. Check out our Patreon page and make sure you support us there. Anything you guys can give really helps keep this project going and helps us achieve our goal of a totally free online ground school. As always, if you can't fly every day, then fly at mikealpha.com. We'll see y'all next time.